already started to stimulate a lot of money in economic development. For instance, in Laytonville, they're already starting on a mobile home project because this board finally, after being sued, got on the stick and, and approved 50 acres of land in Mendocino County for, for low-income housing. So, you know, what's, what's the result of that? Already it's starting to be in a very big economic sti stimulus package. That's just a small example of what's happening already. You know, we have cal county policies, for instance, <coughs> environmental health. With a shortage of water, if you have a high output el a well that will have enough water in it for 50 houses, our environmental health division has a policy, and the house policy says that you can't hook that up to a second <coughs> house. That's not state law. That's somehow this no growth policy that we've adopted. Building and planning, I think I've showed everybody on the board that letter that I intercepted that said basically if you have a project, either forget about it for a year or, or forget about it or come back in a year. That's only, you know, those are things that evolved in this county. They're no growth policies. They're not state law. They're no growth policies that we've, you know, and I don't think, as the statistics show, I don't think no growth is the issue here. Maybe that's one of the reasons all of our schools are on decreasing enrollment. You know, so land use, uh, use decisions are very important. We made a big step by getting this general plan that you got done. But uh, Supervisor Smith, I, if a biomass plant was proposed on the coastline and uh, Fort Bragg, I doubt very seriously that the people over there would, would ever get through the, the land use decision process. I hope it would. You know, we couldn't even do it uh, 20 years ago in three different locations in, in the inland side. Uh, slaughterhouse, a lot of talk here today about slaughterhouse. <coughs> Just when the talk come up, there was an organized effort in the newspapers to put it down. Now, if you're an investor, we're looking at that, whether it's a biomass or slaughterhouse, would you pick a county that has that much <coughs> opposition before you even spend a dollar into a project? That's what makes it tough in this county. So land use decisions at the board level, planning commission board level, level are so important, so important to make things move forward. Uh, you know, water, whether you're talking about biomass or slaughterhouse, it takes some water. We've got to come up with some more water. Up until two weeks ago when the board took control of the Mill Creek dams, Mendocino County didn't own or control a gallon of water. So we've made the first step. Hopefully now with the raising of Lake Mendocino, that's going to be some more water. At least we're going to have some water to argue about. But, uh, <laughs> you know, land use decisions and water, if you can't come up to a reasonable direction that we want some economic development in that, if you can't get, get past a land use decision and water availability, what we're doing here in this meeting here isn't worth the light bill. Any additional comments? Um, I think at this point, I don't know if there's any panel members. I want to add, add um, one thing that's maybe it's self serving, but <laughs> something that needs to be done is a, an update of our SES uh, economic development plan because without a current uh, a plan that's less than five years old, ACD won't entertain um, applications. For, um, business assistance or for um, uh, microenterprise. Steve, oh, I'm sorry. Either Either way. Well, I just have, I, I wanted to comment on this part of the economic presentation, but I, um, um, you know, I'm a small businessman. I'm not talking biomass here now, but there are some programs that I've availed myself up there of that help develop my business that have been really helpful. One of some in train, in employment training now, EPP funds for our training grants. And that, we had a grant that just got canceled because it saved our money and it took money back. Uh, but we did utilize that and it was a very good program. And also, another program we had was uh, Carol Jarvis, uh, we got employees on a subsidized rate train. It was like on the job training. I, I have two full time employees who work for me now in my business, one for, me, one for eight years and one for four years that came through that program. And it's a really good program because it takes some of the risk of hiring employees, you know, away. And you can hire really good people and you can train them and you have some time to bring them into the business and let them know, you know, that I'm a small business. You have to make money for the business. There's a lot of pressure. And then it's funny, you know, I don't know what, how much money they gave us. They gave us three or four months of subsidy 
a percentage of the wages. It took some of the edge off, allowed you to bring them into the system there. And I, I, I don't know exactly in the program, but I do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an excellent program, and I, you know, that that, pro, that we use that three times, and all three employees have been excellent employees. Because we had time to bring them into the system and train them up. And one of the three employees actually left me and took a better job. I was sad to see her go. But I'm just saying that you know there there are some programs that are I think you get a lot of bang for the buck on them, and I think that's something that you need to think about. Because you can stimulate business, you know, just because I sell I sold two by fours for a million years doesn't mean I'm not going to sell hardware next week. And you know, the world's changing. We're changing right here in front of us, and we have to. A lot of different levels. Businesses have to keep up, and it's really hard when you're fighting the day-to-day -day battles of just trying to keep your head above the water to actually be able to look there and say, "How am I going to get there?" And there are some programs out that I think work really well that will you know, get your people training money. Man, that is a great thing because you can take good employees and make them better. And just a critical point: 40% of our business is not done in Mendocino County. We used to be 100% Mendocino County business, now it's 60% Mendocino County, 40% surrounding counties. And we're selling environmental consulting services, and a lot of that came from training, because you know we had to reinvent ourselves here. The timber industry has gone down, and I think there's a lot of businesses that could have some more benefits. We get some more training dollars, help us, you know, help us better fit the new marketplace. You see a lot of people who are already here working, already paying taxes, being more fruitful in this economy. That's why. Okay. Can I tag on to that because we have John Eagle of the executive director of Mendocino Private Industry Council, and that is the program that he's referring to, the on-the-job training program that is from the Workforce Investment Act um, fund. And um, I have to say, in these slim times, those dollars are shrinking as well. As you all know, they've decreased by half since the year 2000, and the competitive funds that you just referred to, the ETP funds, are getting harder to get, and we are, as we speak, awaiting another um, grant to be awarded that we may not get because the funds are just dwindling from the federal and the state level. But, the, but that doesn't mean we can't attach. And what we're trying to do within the Workforce Investment Board staff is look for grant applications through foundations. <coughs> And thank goodness we're attached to MPIC Private Industry Council because we can we can um, apply for those through the nonprofit. So we're trying to get it wherever we can and still have those services. Well, excuse me. So um, I guess what I would say in, in listening to all three panels and Supervisor Colfax, I think, hit it on the head, is that it is a lot about connection. We listen to our our panels, many of us are talking about the same thing, or parts of the same thing. And I do think it's all of our work, and I'm not saying it's the board supervisor's work, to uh, make those connections and get focused. I think there's plenty of resources. That's the experience we've had. There are plenty of resources that we can focus ourselves. Uh, there are people, um, Jesse's been working with us, uh, we work with Jesse, um, other people from the panel, Olivia was at the Mendo Futures work. I mean, we're all wanting the same thing. We just need to get together and make those decisions to make your jobs easier. That's the problem. The problem is that by the time things come to you, it's a controversy. Yeah. And so we all know that what the community needs to do and whatever support we can provide each other is to minimize the controversy find those things that we can agree to get started on to get started on I think that the paradigm shift if there is one if that's the word we want to use that I would recommend and it's just I think in the futures would recommend and I think that's the work that the board could work on is what is what are the set of principles we're trying to do to use for our development long term as opposed to project by project, can we take a, put a position in the ground as a county, and we're willing to help with that, and say this is the kind of development we want to shoot for, um, and begin all of us to work towards doing that. And I don't